Hello, New Life. Uh, this is uh, Joel Pesmino. Uh, I, I used to be uh, uh, one of the church planters in residence at New Life, and I, I miss you guys a lot. And uh, Brad asked me if I would uh, bring, uh, you know, the devotion for today, and I'm just really, really honored, really glad to be coming to you uh, via video. So uh, this morning, I want to share something with you from the Psalms. This is Psalm 91. I just want to read you the first few verses. Psalm 91, starting on verse 1, says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuges. Faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. Um, when, uh, you know, when COVID hit, uh, you know, middle of March and the churches were, uh, you know, have going to online services only, and I know everything was happening so fast. I, I remember that this psalm became very, very, very popular, and I was seeing it on social media. I was seeing, you know, uh, posts about it, sermons about it, particularly because of the references that it has to plagues and pestilence, right? So, if, if there's a, a, a part of scriptures that talks about God protecting people in the midst of the seas, is a psalm. Now, as the time went by, there, there was another reason why I personally kept coming back to this psalm. And it's like the beginning of the psalm, like the first couple of verses. It says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Um, here in, in Washington, D.C., where I am, uh, the, the lockdown was called stay-at-home orders. But uh, in, in a lot of states around the country, it was called shelter in place. And uh, I remember I liked that because it's a very poetic shelter in place. I don't know, it sounds like heroic in a way. Um, but I remember hearing that term and my mind going automatically to this psalm, to this idea that for the psalmist, one of the ways in which he pictures God, one of the ways in, in, in which he understands God in relationship to his life is as a shelter. And I think that's an important image for us to, to think about God. It's an important imagery and metaphor to think about how God works in our lives. Because it's a one imagery that helps us engage with God in the midst of a problem. You see, what happens is that a lot of us like to think uh, sometimes in the past, so when something bad happens, our thoughts immediately go to, why did this happen? And there's frustration, there's anger, there's lament, but, but there's this, this looking to the past. Or I've also seen people are only looking to the future, right? And, and their prayers and their understanding of God is much in the terms of like, you know, God is going to change things. As God is going to move and God is going to come through and do something and say, and it's very like a future looking way of thinking about God. But the question is, how do we think about God now? How do we think about God in the midst of trouble, in the midst of problems where, you know, looking to the past doesn't help and the future hasn't happened yet? How do we deal with God now? And this psalm, I think, gives us a clue. Because what the psalmist says is, well, when I am in the midst of trouble, the way in which I think about God, the, which, the way in which I, you know, connect with God is I see God as my shelter. I see God as my refuge. And what the psalmist means in, in that passage, because, because God is not physically a shelter, God's a spiritual being. And I think that what the psalmist is getting at is that he sees God as the ultimate source of protection and security for his life. That he's thinking about God primarily. God is the one who will ultimately preserve my life in whatever form that looks like, whatever that means. God is the one in, in whom I'm ultimately placing my trust for protection. And today I just want to give you two key ideas of how we can connect with God in that way, how we can think about God in terms of that. The first one is uh, something I alluded to already. We, we have to learn to deal with the present. Because a lot of times we're thinking about the past, about, you know, maybe what we've lost. Maybe we're like in the midst of, of you know, getting kind of like out of lockdown and our thoughts are still on the things, wishing things were back to how they were before. And we're kind of like very like past looking. Or 
We're very future looking. I, we're very much thinking about when things are going to change and when things are going back to how they were before. And, and both things have their place, but we're in neither of those situations right now. Things are not how they were anymore, and they still haven't gone back to fully normal, right? We're in this in-between place. And here in this in-between place, we have to deal with it. We have to, you know, like see God in the midst of this. It's not asking God, why haven't you done, why did you allow this to happen? Or why haven't you done more? Or like, when are you going to move and change? But God, what are you trying to do in my life today? What are you trying to teach me today? What are the ways in which I can experience your love? and your protection? What are the ways in which you're trying to use my life today, in this moment? Shelter is a very present tense situation. And if we're going to experience a shelter of God, we have to learn to seek God and see what God is trying to do in our lives in the present. Now, there's another thing that we have to realize in order to understand God as a shelter, and it's this. We have to recognize that we are exposed. What I mean by that is, who needs shelter? The person that needs shelter is a person that is in the midst of trouble that they cannot protect themselves. The imagery in the psalm is, you know, the psalmist, if it's referring to David, in the desert, out on the open, being chased around maybe by a Philistine army or an enemy army, maybe it's, Saul, maybe it's Saul's army, and he's out in the desert, out in the wilderness, looking for a place where he can stay safe because he's exposed. And you see, one of the things that COVID has done is it ha it's revealed how so many of the shelters that we've thought we've built for our lives are not that secure. What I mean by that, if you think about it, our lives, for the most part, are about building shelters to protect ourselves. Our lives are about isolating ourselves for things. Maybe, you know, the, the, where we live and the types of houses that, that we buy or build, what? They're like literally, you know, creating shelter from the elements. But we're also trying to create shelter maybe from a high crime area. So we, we, we try to live in a place that's more safe. Or we're trying to build shelter from, you know, economic necessity. So we're trying to build a place that's cheaper and, and more affordable. We're trying to create shelter for our children. So we're trying to find a place that has a good school district. Now, none of these things are wrong. Like may maybe you like, you know, are trying to go up in the corporate world. Why? Because you want to make money, not necessarily because you're greedy, but because you want to provide for your family and keep your family safe. All of these things are good. The problem is when we make them ultimate. When, when we think that these things are the ones keeping us safe. When the reason why we can go to bed at night and sleep sound is because we have X amount of money in our bank accounts and because we have a house with, you know, X amount of equity and because we've gone to this particular school and because we have these initials next to our name because of the education that we have. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Like we live our lives building these shelters around our life to protect our lives, to isolate ourselves from pain and danger. And one of the things that COVID is on is that it kind of like unveiled how fragile all those things are. How big companies with billions of dollars in profits are like going bankrupt and having to shut down stores because of how this time has exposed them. It took a virus that's microscopic to upend so many things in the world. And I'm not saying that it's not important to, you know, be responsible financially and to, you know, study and to provide a good education for our children. All these things are good, but they're not ultimate. If you look to any of these things to be your ultimate shelter, you are going to find yourself exposed when the moment of crisis hits. And what the psalmist is saying is, listen, the only place that I look to for shelter, where I'm secure, where I can find protection, where I can find rest in the middle of whatever situation is under the shadow of the Most High. And the invitation for us today 
is to make God our ultimate shelter. To recognize that the ultimate protection, the only one who can preserve our souls is God. It's not our bank account. It's not our looks. It's not our last name. It's not our education. It's God. I know what? When that's our shelter, it doesn't matter what comes, out, what comes around. It doesn't matter what tries to hit us. It doesn't matter what the enemy is, whether it's a financial crisis, whether it is a global pandemic, whether it is the loss of a job. It doesn't matter because we are under the shelter of the Most High. And we can trust that whatever happens to our life, that God preserves our souls, that we are ultimately safe in God. No matter what comes in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of pain, in the midst of suffering, God preserves us. So I want to invite you to pray with me this morning. Father God, we come before you today. And we just recognize how exposed our lives are, really, so many different ways. And, and, and we repent of all the ways in which we have put our ultimate trust in other things that are not you. And Lord, in this time, during this moment, the cry of our hearts is that we might be able to find shelter in you and only in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Grace and peace be with you.